Far Cry 6. After seeing the trailers, I was expecting this to be a sequel to my favorite TV show, Breaking Bad. So imagine my disappointment when I found out that it is actually a game about enslaving poor Cuban villagers and committing racially charged genocide. The fact that this even got released shows the utterly depressing state that our world now finds itself in. Monster Hunter Rise after several hours of attempting to defeat the first enemy with my dual blades, I realized that I was doing absolutely no damage. So I uninstalled the game and downloaded Nekopara Volume 2 instead. Absolutely not recommended. Caligula Effect 2 I purchased this game in the hopes to be able to marry my pet horse. However, I was sad to find out that instead it is a repetitive dungeon crawler that is infuriatingly difficult. Were it not for cheat codes, I would never have even beaten the first stage. We need more games that support the bestiality scene. Battle in Wonderworld This game is about as easy to understand as it is to program an integer via Python on a Linux boot up screen. I still don't know how to do either, so this is really a massive disappointment as I was quite looking forward to this game. At least the book makes for a great replacement for anyone who hates having fun. Metroid Dread after only a few minutes of playing, I had already gotten stuck, so in order to continue playing, I downloaded the game on my computer and used cheat codes through an emulator in order to get to the final boss, and then gave myself invincibility to beat it. A fun game! Guilty Gear Strive This game was fun until I decided to go online. After all the experience with the Dolphin Girl, I lost all my hope in humanity and downloaded cheats to give myself infinite meter to go online with. Those shitty dolphins don't stand a chance now. A great game! Tales of Arise When I started playing this game, I expected to be having fun. However, it turned out to be a scarily accurate representation of what it's like to be a child slave in Northern Siberia. Good luck beating this piece of crap without buying the overly expensive DLC cheats. Bandai should be ashamed of themselves. Resident Evil 8 Despite being a next-gen title, the game's quality feels like it's stuck in the 60s. I was actually fairly disappointed that you weren't able to burn down the furniture, so I spent most of my time slapping the big vampire lady's butt. My favorite part is when Ethan dies at the end. Psychonauts 2 I can't believe they seriously made a sequel to this crappy game no one even remembers. The jumping is way too difficult and the novelty of exploring the minds of sociopaths wears off quickly after you realize that there are no extremely graphic depictions of violent mass murders and sexual assaults. I also sadly had to stop playing early on due to the opening state triggering my severe dentophobia. What an incredibly insensitive game. Neo, the world ends with you. After multiple hours of attempting to understand the youthful language spoken within this game, I eventually gave up, as it was far beyond my human comprehension. At least the gameplay is fun, involving a colorful array of button-mashing estrogen simulations. Highly recommended. WarioWare, get it together! I wish the developers would get their shit together and make a good fucking game! Seriously, what is this garbage? The minigames make no sense and are way too short. I can't believe they are charging 60 bucks for this crap. What a ripoff. And let's not get even into the shitty graphics. They make Super Mario look like a masterpiece. And we all know what that means. Persona 5 Strikers. The biggest strike this game hit was the phenomenal art direction and the sheer amount of enemies to mow through that almost made me forget that this game even had a story to begin with. I'm also a big fan of how they made every female character in this game look overly attractive, though I wish there were more sexy costumes. Though that's not something the internet can't fix with mods. Easily the best thing about this game is the soundtrack, which puts all of rap music to shame. Eminem went real quiet after this masterpiece came out. Melty Blood, Type Lumina. This otherwise great game is ruined by the fact that the characters look like they just walked out of my office. When I play a fighting game, I expect the characters to look like they just left the gym for the first time in months, after extensive non-stop workouts that have left all the clothing ripped due to the sheer amount of muscle mass they accumulated. If I wanted to beat up Dave from next doors, I could simply do so right now. In fact, I think I will do that just now. Yakuza Like a Dragon After being a big fan of the power trip that was Yakuza 6 on the easiest difficulty, I was thoroughly disappointed when I found out that you now have to wait in order to do anything. On top of that, you can still not beat up women. Come on, Sega, stop being so sexist. Even when you're drunk in the game, it doesn't happen. Wouldn't such a thing be considered normal in real life? I truly don't understand these Japanese moral concepts. No more heroes free. More like no more good gameplay. What the fuck is this Star Wars shit? Utter trash. 7 out of 10. I like the cool jacket that Tommy or whatever his name was guy had. 
Near Replicant. I was trying to beat the tutorial, however I ended up clipping through the wall every time I skipped a cutscene, and I became so impatient that I downloaded a cheat trainer. Sadly, this only made things worse, as the developers forgot to program good game design. More like they should replicate some freaking game design from every other game released in the last 20 years. This game sucks donkey dong. If I wanted to collect sharp objects to good an ending, I'd ask the quiet kid in class to show me his wrists. What the heck is a near anyway? This game says developers should need to get near a game that isn't so up its own poopy hole. Not recommended. Life is strange. True colors. After my wife desperately begged me to play this game, I finally realized that empathy is indeed a superpower, as I felt absolutely no remorse for beating her after I finally beat the game. Truly the strangest thing about this game is the fact that Square Enix was able to sell a copy of this trash. Shin Megami Tensai 5 Despite the game not having yet released, I feel it necessary to mention that this is already the best game of the year, due to the incredible amount of attractive demon women that you can recruit to your side and force to do your bidding. It's like polygamy, without the drawbacks of having to care for them, while still being able to sacrifice them for a better woman at any given time. Atlas really made a modern day of incubating with this one. Galgun Returns Due to my inability to approach women in real life, I turned to Integrate's this new masterpiece. Sadly, I was disappointed that all the minors in this game were above the age of consent. Come on, Japan, we're living in the modern age. Let the gamers decide what they want. After all, aren't MAPs part of the LGBT community? We should be more accepting of our beautiful minorities. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. It's a shame to see that Sony is now supporting interracial relationships within the furry community. I am all fine with sex toys, but I really don't believe that choking your sexual partner with a wrench is a good idea. They should go back to making games about catching funny little monkey man instead. Thankfully, the game makes up for its shortcomings by letting you shoot innocent civilians, but even that loses its charm very quickly. This is the worst Sony game yet. That's it for Gaming in the Biden Years, Episode 1, Season 1. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos. I'm your host, James Wood, and I'll see you all in the next episode.